These are Sonatec 10 gig network adapters. So I'm gonna talk you through essentially what these are and why I have both of these and which one I plan on using for my home setup. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with this one. And you can see this is just a 10 gig network adapter by Sonnet. It's USB-C with a 10 gig ethernet port on it. So we're just gonna open this up here. And you can see that all that comes in the box is basically some instructions, um, piece of cardboard down here. All right, and we'll get this out of the way. So this is basically all you need. It has a USB-C adapter. It has a 10 gig ethernet on it. And this will tell you if it's 10 gig, five gig, 2.5 gig, one gig, or 100 meg. Um, and this is, you know, it's a pretty sizable um, little piece. It's going to be external to your computer. You know, you're going to need some desk room, but it has a little bit of heft to it. Um, so once you sit it on your desk, it's not going to move. So it does have this, uh, what they call a captive USB-C cable in the back of it. So you can see that there's uh, two screws right here on the back of uh, this network adapter. And if we take this uh, T10 Torx bit, we can actually remove these screws on the back of this. And this little panel just slides right off just like that. And then you can see right in here that there is a regular just USB-C um, Thunderbolt cable that sits inside of here. So you could potentially upgrade this cable to a longer one or replace it just in case, you know, some of the ends get bent. Uh, it does seem like they have like a little piece of, you know, cushion tape in there just to make sure that it's not getting bent around. But we'll just plug that back in there and slip this panel. Make sure we got that plugged in. Slip this panel on the back. Throw these screws back in here. And so I think this is a pretty good feature of this external network adapter. Um, I mean, it's nice to have the cable captive like this because then it puts less stress on the actual uh, connector inside the unit should you have, um, you know, some stress on the cable the way it's sitting on your desk. So this gives you a couple options to just, you know, be able to replace it or if you need to do an extension on it. You can, you can easily do that. So outside of that, there's not much to it. Uh, there's no fan inside of this thing. Uh, there's no extra power needed. You just plug it directly into USB-C and uh, you should be all good. Uh, nice little unit. So the reason I originally bought this unit is I was doing a 10 gig ethernet and I was connecting to uh, a Synology NAS as well as some other things on my network that are 10 gig. So I have a 10 gig uh, um, SPF plus switch. So I got a uh, 10 gig SPF plus adapter that goes to ethernet and I plug that in and hook this in and everything was great. And then I started thinking about kind of the future and if I buy another home or if I decide to move to a different room, the limitations on the length of 10 gig ethernet. And that's what led me to the other Sonic device. So I'm going to uh, bring that one in now to kind of show you the differences there. So here is the other Sonic device. So you can see the box is uh, slightly bigger. Uh, the reason being is because this one actually has SPF Plus. So you can see that this is a little bit longer in size. It does come with uh, an SPF Plus adapter in it uh, for 10 gig fiber. Uh, and then it has that same captive cable design on the back with the two screws where you can take this out and, you know, change the USB cable uh, as needed. So you can still see here that all that comes in here is basically this installation guide and that's pretty much all you need. No drivers or anything like that. So just to compare these two from a, a side by side size footprint, you can see uh, the size difference there, it's, it's not much, maybe about a half inch on the box and then all the way out to the F SPF module without the, the plunger in it, you can probably call it an inch total uh, longer on your desk. Yeah, so again, uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, got 10 gig 
Uh, this fiber module that's in here is, is only gonna do 10 gig. I haven't tested it with any other modules at all, but uh, this box is a little bit heavier. Uh, again, no fan. This whole thing is basically used as a heat sink. So this does get warm to the touch when you have it plugged in and you're using it, especially if you're doing uh, very high throughputs, you will see that the, the performance is, or, or that the heat will get a little bit hotter on it. Nothing crazy, but you can definitely put your hand on it and, and feel the warmth that's coming out of this. So uh, again, very nice. Uh, I've been doing some performance testing, which I'll, pro I'll provide in an, another video, uh, but this has been performing very well and I'm, I'm very happy with it. So what I'm gonna do now is I still decided to stay with 10 gig in the in the short term, 10 gig ethernet in the short term and not the fiber. So this module is a little bit more expensive. Um, so I think this one runs about $50 more expensive than just the pure ethernet one, but it was worth it to me. So you pull out this, uh, this module here and this is the fiber module. And what I did was, is I purchased uh, one of these, you can find these off of Amazon. Uh, they have really good reviews. They're uh, pretty affordable for these adapters, but this is basically 10 gig ethernet. Um, and I just got one of these to swap out inside this unit. So you just slide that and I'll just kind of show you inside of there. Might not be able to get that real good, but um, basically you can just pop that in there and now you've converted this to 10 gig ethernet. And this is exactly why I wanted this. So for right now, this fits my needs using a 10 gig ethernet. You're really gonna get about the same latency and all that kind of stuff, especially in a household. Um, but the benefits of fiber is the additional distance that you can get. So in the event that I move or decide to move my office or move to a different house or something along those lines, I'm able to keep the same equipment. I don't have to make a big investment in another one of these boxes. I can just swap this back out for the fiber module and then run fiber into whatever location I'm at if I happen to be a larger distance or just happen to be in a house that's uh, going to make me route cables in a way that's going to get me close to the, the maximum of Ethernet. So I uh, just wanted to do this quick review here on this adapter. I'm very happy with it so far. I've been seeing uh, transfer throughputs on this well over 900 megabytes a second. Um, and I've been very impressed with it so far. Um, it, it does, like I said, get warm, but it, I think it works very well. I've been using it with a MacBook Pro. There were no drivers needed or kind of any installation of any software. Just plug this straight into the side of my MacBook Pro into a lightning port. Um, and this worked phenomenally right out the box. Got a IP address and, and started working. So that's just a quick review of these Sonic Tech boxes. Which I'll put everything out here. So that's why I started with this one and moved to this one, but I'm very happy with, with my choice here. I will be returning this one. Uh, like I said, this was about $50 more expensive, but I think the performance, or not the performance, but the future proofing that I get with this was worth the extra money. Um, if you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching.